Okay guys, time to work on our second lesson in our Labrador Retriever Puppy Training Series. And uh, so it's hot out here today. It's August day, it's uh, noon time. I'm having to do this video. I just got done working, doing lessons for people. And so it's unbelievably hot and puppies don't generally work very well in the heat, but I need to get this video done. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. I got a little lab puppy, he's about 11 weeks old or so. He's over there in the pool and, and uh, he's trying to cool off. But I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna make a multi-syllable high pitch noise and I'm gonna uh, clap my hands, maybe whistle a little bit. And if I'm lucky, He's going to run out of that pool and run over here and say, hey, Stoney, you want to do some work? And I'm going to say yes. And then today we're going to introduce walking on the leash to the dog. Little puppy! <laughs> here, little puppy! Oh, and here he comes. Good job. Hey, and that's why, listen, when you're doing your training, if your dog doesn't run to you when you're calling him, something's wrong. That dog should run right up here and he should say, okay, well, let's, let's get to doing some work. Okay, so this puppy's up here and he's on the table. I'm going to start off and I'm just going to review. I'm going to do his base pattern with him a little bit. What's the base pattern? We got sit and we have stand and we have wave and we have down. Okay, and we do that like at the beginning of all our little training sessions. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to fooling with this leash. Now, what I use, guys, I know there's a lot of different arguments on what's the best piece of equipment for, for uh, walking a dog in real life, but we'll get to all those different pieces of equipment. What I'm going to show you today, I just use this as a little English show leash, and the reason I use this is because I can just throw it around my neck, and I'm lucky I've got a big place, so dogs don't have to be on the leash a whole lot, but when I need to put one on a leash, I just take this little show, show leash and I open it up and make a loop in it like this, and what I do with the puppies, I hold this loop and I give me some food in this hand, and I just pay them for putting their head through that loop. Okay, just that simple. And so I'll do that two or three times. Puts his head through that loop, something good happens. Right? Puts his head through that loop, something good happens. All right, so now he's cool with having this leash put on him, so I'm gonna tighten it up right here at the base of his neck, pat him just a little bit. And now I wanna make him understand that this leash is gonna convey some information to him sometimes, right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull on this leash and I'm gonna pay him for going with it. Watch, I'm gonna pull on it and I'm gonna pay him. I'm gonna bring him over here and I'm gonna pull on it and I'm gonna pay him. And I'm gonna pull on it. So he starts to realize that going with that leash you know, and I'm also using this in conjunction with a technique called targeting, which is just following my hand. But look, see that pressure on that leash? He starts to realize to go with the pressure. Now, if the pressure comes backwards, then he goes with the pressure, right? And here comes the treats. So I put pressure to get him to sit. Okay, then I'm going to put the slack in the leash to maintain the sit, and that's where the treats come. Now watch, if he goes to get up here, then I'm going to put pressure back on the leash, and I'm going to take the treat away. So what he starts to understand is that, you know, uh, when this leash is talking to him, he has to listen. And the leash is representing what I would like to have happen, right? So if I move the leash this way, oh, he's got to go. If I move the leash this way, he's got to go. If I pull the leash up and back, he has to sit and stay, right? Oh, you see, he got, went to get up, and I start in with my, my pressure backwards. He learns to go with the pressure, to give to the pressure. He sits back down. Here comes the treat. Up, here comes the treat. Now you start to hear me say that word, uh -uh, right? Well, I'm introducing the concept of stop or wait or no, whatever you want to say. I use uh, uh right? Okay, so he goes to get up. I'm going to do this, and he stays. I'm going to do this. Very simple, black and white. He's staying, something good happens. Now each day, what I do is I add time and distance, and I'm going to use this uh, as an element of control. Think about this kind of like what you use when things go wrong. What I would like to do is just be able to steadily work farther and farther away from the dog, right? And that's one of the reasons I use this elevated surface. But sometimes, you know, I realize you guys don't have as much time as I do, so you'll want to go ahead and start working with your leash right off the bat, and I'm going to start to move away. Uh -uh. I bring the treat in when he makes the right decision. I move away, I come back. I move away, I come back. And this leash is here just in case he breaks that sit, you know? Look at that, look at that, see how good that is? Now, once I get up here, I'm gonna teach him, I'm gonna say, hey, I need you to go with the leash, so I pull on the leash, there he comes. Then I pull on the leash this way, there he comes. Then I pull on the leash this way, there he comes. And we're gonna repeat this pattern a few times, and then we're gonna go back, I'm gonna pull this way, good, and there. So you see how I'm using the leash work in conjunction with the targeting and the regular food work with my base patterns, right? 
Okay, but I'm jumping ahead a little bit and I'm getting him to respect what the leash tells him. Because until I get the dog to where he minds me, you know, out of habit, I'm going to have to have a leash on him. And some of you people live in places where, you know, dogs just always going to have a leash on. So you might as well right off the bat get him to understand that if that leash tells him something, he has to listen. So if it tells him to go forward, that's what needs to happen. And if it tells him he needs to sit, then that's what needs to happen. And I don't want him ever to develop a habit of resisting this leash. So that's our second lesson, is how to teach a dog not to resist the leash. I want him to look forward to putting the leash on, okay? So I make my loop, hold it like this, I take my hand and I get him to stick his head through the loop. Then I move forward, good. Get him to follow the leash and I use my targeting and then I pull the leash away and you see where he has to understand that now he has to use indirect action to get the treat because like when they're just targeting see he would have kept following this over here with his nose and I told him I said resist the urge just to follow this and listen to the leash and so when I pulled up on the leash he knew that it was time to quit following the hand good if you drop a piece let him get it good and then you go back to adding time and distance so I'm gonna stay I'm gonna wait Give him a treat. Now, the way I generally do this to myself is I'll think in terms of pauses. So I'll give him a treat, and I'll pause, treat. A couple of days later, it's pause, pause, treat. Day, a few days after that, it's pause, 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 treat. Then I start to add in body motions, like I'll rock away and come back. I'll spin around. Oh, and I missed it, so watch. I'm going to take the leash, come back to here. Good. And then I'm going to spin around and give him a treat. Give him a treat, and I'm going to spin around. Oh, now see, he didn't make it, so I have to wait. Give him a treat. Now, so if I'm losing him, I bring him back to the spot where I started, put a little pressure on the leash, tell him to listen to the leash, stay, and I back up. Always, if you get yourself in trouble, just back up a couple of steps. Good. Start adding time and distance again. If it's real hot, like today, and the sun's beating down on them, well, of course, you'd want to do this in the shade or lower your expectations. Now, watch, I'm going to walk away and come back. Walk away and come back. I'm going to turn my back to him and come back. Give him a treat, turn my back to him, come back. Then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to start working with following the leash, listening to the leash. Now, in case you're just thinking he's just following my hand, watch. Now my hand goes away and the leash goes backwards and he has to make that decision there to listen to the leash instead of just following that piece of food. That's very important that you establish that pattern of indirect action at an early age. Okay guys, so that's our second lesson. Uh, I'll see you next week. Yes sir, yes sir.